Are leg cramps cramping your style? Okay, I had to do it, come on. Today, let's talk about the eight causes and cures of leg cramps because those things are painful and I've struggled with them. Let's go. Leg cramps usually happen in the lower legs and they can be extremely excruciatingly painful, like a Charlie horse in your leg. I used to get them when I was living in south of France and I was out a lot in the warm sun. I think my electrolytes were just out of balance and I was waking up in the middle of the night with excruciating leg cramps. Leg cramps can wake you up and make it difficult to sleep. This is not the way you want to be waking up. So we're gonna talk about eight causes. Some of these can be more simple and not very harmful, easy to fix, but make sure you watch all the way through because a few of them can be quite dangerous and things that you need to make sure you get addressed and see a doctor for. Number one, a salt or sodium deficiency. Now we hear all of this, so much of this talk about don't have salt in your diet, limit salt, it can cause high blood pressure. And yes, that's true. Having a diet high in sodium and too much sodium is not good for you but sodium is crucial for your body. Sodium is involved in so many cellular reactions. You cannot live without sodium in your body. You need it, but it needs to be in a balanced way. If you're eating tons of processed foods, you're probably getting too much sodium, but if you're eating natural, good whole foods, then you can put some salt, sprinkle some salt on there, some pink Himalayan salt, any salt really will do. Sodium is one of the electrolytes that is key in muscle function. And if you're low in it, it can cause muscle cramps. So if you're noticing leg cramps, you might wanna sprinkle some salt on your food and see if that helps. Number two, magnesium deficiency. Now I did a whole video on magnesium deficiency and, and what can cause it, what are the signs and symptoms of it. Magnesium is crucial for muscle function, specifically muscle relaxation. So your muscles need magnesium. It competes with calcium for, you know, calcium contracts your muscles and magnesium relaxes your muscles. So if you have magnesium deficiency, your muscle is gonna have a hard time relaxing and it's not going to function properly and then you might get that cramping and you don't want that. So make sure you are not deficient in magnesium. And you know what? About 50% or more of people, according to some sources, are deficient in magnesium. So it's quite common. So this could be the culprit. And actually, I'm pretty sure I was deficient in magnesium or potentially in the fourth one that we're gonna be talking about because I started supplementing with magnesium and it helped my leg cramps. Make sure you're getting enough magnesium in your diet. So leafy green vegetables, different nuts like almonds are high in magnesium. Pumpkin seeds, avocados, legumes, and uh, one of my favorites, dark chocolate. Great source of magnesium and super delicious. Number three, calcium dysregulation. So we talked about muscle function. Calcium is important in muscle contraction. So you have calcium for the muscle to contract and magnesium for it to relax. And like I said, they compete with each other. So if you have too much of one or too little of one, it's not good for your muscles. So if you have too little calcium, it's gonna be hard for your muscle to contract, but also having too much calcium can also cause muscle cramping. If you have low calcium, I would recommend getting it from your diet as much as you can. I am not a big fan of calcium supplementation through pills. For magnesium and potassium and some of these other electrolytes, it's totally fine to supplement with pills. But for calcium, the studies actually show that it's better to get calcium from your diet. And there's a lot of sources of calcium. Dairy, of course, milk, yogurts, kefir. I love me some kefir. But you can also get it from things like sardines, salmon, nuts have it, leafy green vegetables. So there's a lot of things. If you're eating a good, rich, healthy, balanced, whole food diet, it should be high in calcium. Number four is another electrolyte, potassium. This is another common electrolyte deficiency that can cause muscle cramps. And like I said, for me, I'm pretty sure it was magnesium and potassium because those are two of the common deficiencies that can cause leg cramps. And I started supplementing with both of these and my leg cramps went away in just like two weeks. Potassium is of course involved in muscle function, muscle contraction, so you need it. If you're deficient in it, you can have leg cramps. So there's a lot of different foods you can consume to help make sure you have adequate potassium in your diet. Things like coconut water actually have a lot of electrolytes, including potassium. I know a lot of people hear about bananas being high in potassium. You can definitely do that. But other things like avocados, sweet potatoes also have high potassium. Yogurt and watermelon also are good sources of potassium. 
You also want to make sure you're staying well hydrated, especially if you're working out because being dehydrated can affect your electrolytes and cause an electrolyte imbalance. So that can also contribute to leg cramps. Having any one of these four electrolyte imbalances can cause leg cramps or muscle cramps. But there's another muscle in your body that is extremely important for your health and life, and that is the heart. So if you're having leg cramps, that could mean you have an electrolyte imbalance, and it could mean that potentially your heart could be affected later on if this goes on, right? If you, if you don't correct it, and you don't want that. Leg cramps can be fairly harmless, they're painful, but having heart palpitations, irregularities, arrhythmias, you don't wanna go there. So just make sure if you're having leg cramps, you address it and see if there is an underlying deficiency there that's causing them. Number five, overexertion. So this is a pretty simple one. If you're kind of out of shape, you haven't done a lot of physical activity or you just went way too hard in the gym or for a hike, then you can end up having some muscle cramps. This isn't a huge issue. It's usually temporary. It will usually go away. It just means you probably need to take it a little bit easier, be a little kind of work your way up with your endurance or make sure you have a regular activity. So you're not just going from no activity to a whole bunch of activity. That is a good way to prevent muscle cramps related to overexertion. And also remember to stay hydrated, especially if you're working out. Also, I'll mention sitting a lot or sitting in like a bad position can sometimes cause you to have leg cramps. Again, this is temporary and it's, it's benign. It's nothing serious. It will go away. But if you're sitting in like a bad position or you're sitting for long periods of time, that could be what's causing some of that muscle twitching or muscle spasm. So you might just need to do a little bit more physical activity. Number six, medications. So yes, medications can actually cause leg cramping and muscle cramping. There's quite a few of them. Diuretics, which are sometimes used to treat blood pressure or to get rid of fluid, that can kind of cause some imbalance in your electrolytes and cause leg cramping. But the one that I wanna mention that a lot of people could be on are statins. So these are used to treat cholesterol, to lower your cholesterol. They can have some side effects and one of them is muscle cramping or muscle pain or joint aches. Definitely, if you're on a statin and you're having some muscle cramps, leg cramps, that could be the cause. There's also some pain medications like naproxen can contribute and even some medications that are used to treat anxiety or panic attacks like, like Ambien or clonazepam. These can also contribute to leg cramps. Number seven, peripheral artery disease. Now this is a more serious one. This is more of a chronic condition. So it's basically damage or narrowing of the arteries. Basically have a buildup of plaque or fat in the arteries. This makes it hard for blood to get down to where it needs to go to your leg legs, to your calves, to your feet, you have this constricting and lack of blood getting there. And so you can get leg cramping as a result. A classic symptom of peripheral artery disease is pain in the legs or cramping in the legs specifically with physical activity. So if you notice the leg cramping and pain happening when you're going for a walk or doing any type of physical activity, and then it decreases when you're at rest or sedentary, that could be peripheral artery disease. And you can really get it in the legs, in the buttocks, in the thigh. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to just be in the calf, but that is a common place. One of the main ways to prevent peripheral artery disease is manage risk factors. Smoking, smoking is a huge risk factor for peripheral artery disease disease, as well as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, atherosclerosis, aging. Of course, you can't control that one, but the other ones you can definitely try to reduce. If you think you might have peripheral artery disease, don't ignore it. Go see your doctor. They might have to do what's called an ABI test. It's basically testing the blood pressure in your ankle and comparing it with the blood pressure in your arm. That's one of the ways to diagnose it. And number eight, another potentially serious one, DVT or deep vein thrombosis. It's basically a blood clot. Often can happen in the leg, but it can happen in other areas as well. But it's something you don't want to ignore. If you have a DVT, you can get leg cramping, but you can also get swelling, pain, redness, warmth. What's important to note about this in particular, it typically is localized to one extremity, so one leg. You typically won't have a DVT in both legs. So if you're having this cramping or pain in one leg, it could potentially be a DVT, especially if you're noticing that your calf or ankle is enlarged and swollen and warm to touch. These can also be signs of a DVT. The risk factors for a DVT are prolonged periods of being sedentary. So for example, long plane rides, long car rides, 
After surgery, if you're immobilized and not able to walk around much, that can contribute. Smoking is a risk factor. Birth control pills can increase your risk as well as cancer. You do not want to ignore a DVT. If you think you might have one, definitely go see your doctor. The reason for this is if you have a blood clot somewhere, it can break off and it can travel to other parts of your body, parts that you don't want it to travel to. For example, it can break off from the leg and go to your lungs or to your brain. If it goes to your lungs, you can get what's called a pulmonary embolism or PE. This can be deadly. So you don't want to get this. So if you have a DVT, you want to find out, get it diagnosed. Usually your doctor will do an ultrasound of that area, maybe a few other tests. And then you would need to treat it usually with blood thinners so that it goes away. And then you don't have that risk of it breaking off and going to other areas that could potentially cause more catastrophic effects. I'll mention also a few other causes of leg cramps that we didn't really talk about today. But if you've ruled out all these eight and there's still leg cramps going on, it could be things like kidney failure, liver failure, potentially certain types of cancer can also cause leg cramping or muscle cramping. So definitely if you've ruled out these, especially the electrolyte imbalances, which tend to be quite easy and simple to fix. If you've ruled those out and you're still not getting anywhere, definitely talk to your doctor. If you found value in this video, give me a thumbs up so I know I'm on the right track and subscribe if you want to become the healthiest and best version of yourself. Let's do it together.